We're at the beginning of our 2010 season and uh, one game under our belt having played crosstown rival Seattle U and extremely excited about how preseason has gone and the group we've had in training. They, uh, the returners as well as the freshmen who are around in summer school this year did a really good job of preparing themselves and has left uh, us as coaches to simply look at more fine tuning than we normally would this time of year as opposed to really having to work them and get them into form. So that's been great. Uh, big trip ahead of us, headed out to the East Coast to uh, Boston to play the University of Massachusetts in Boston U this coming weekend. And, uh, you know, our non-conference schedule is stacked with a, a host of great teams, and those are all going to hopefully prepare us for the Pac-10, which will be uh, as tough as always. So we're thrilled. I've got two players here to my left and my right that are going to be expected to burden a, a big part of what happens with our team. But with that said, I think – McKenna's fourth year, Kate's third year, they probably have the best supporting cast around them that we've had in their time here, which is really exciting. Leslie, uh, Greg was just talking about you know, the expectations. Coaches see other coaches bring home national titles. Greg saw you know, or Jim McLaughlin bring home national title, and then he brings a national title. And Heather Tarr says, hey, we're, we're jealous. We're envy. We want to bring a national title, too. The fact that national championships can be won at the University of Washington, how much is, uh, do you feel like you feel that and you can impart that to your players. Also. We talk about it all the time. I mean, it's obviously an outcome goal, and it's something that if uh, if you're competitive, which our players are and, and we are as a staff, is it's why you put the uniform on. If you're not out there to win it, then what are you doing? You know. And if, if I'm not telling my players every day that that's the expectation, then um, Scott Woodward shouldn't have me working here. And I really do feel like we've brought in the players that can get us to that point. And, um, you know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves like any coach. And so we try to do the things leading up to that that'll, that'll bring that home for us. But, uh, you know, we do know that based on what's happened around us, that certainly it's something that we want to enjoy. And uh, our players um, feel the exact same way. We, like I said, we, it's something that we are shooting for. Jim characterized Jenna Haglin as the quarterback, Jake Walker, of the team. Who's your guys' quarterback? <sighs> Me? No. <laughs> oh, oh, teasing. Um, soccer's different that way. I mean, I think you have, a, you have a core of your team in soccer, and we talk a lot about moments in games and times in games, and you have to be you know, good on both sides of the ball. You have to be extremely organized defensively if you want to be a good team in the attack. And uh, you know, if, if another team scouts you well enough, they're going to be able to take away who you would consider to be sort of your biggest threats. Uh, so you better be able to bring it from somewhere else. Uh, you know, these two right here, along with Kendall Pele, give us a great group right up the middle and the two goalkeepers we have. So if you look at a forward in McKenna, a center midfielder in Kate, a center back in Kendall Pele, and then both of our goalkeepers, Kerry Davidson and uh, Jordy lafontaine Cussman, um, that's a pretty good spine of our team with, again, great supporting players around you. Um, experience, I think, has to play a part. You know, I expect more of our experienced players, but with that said, when I recruit a kid, a kid and give them a significant scholarship, there are expectations on our freshmen. They get a little bit more leeway, but at the same time, they know coming in that they're here to produce um, as quickly as possible. So, uh, you know, I think we have a lot of great leadership on our team. It's a little bit more collective than, than putting it on one person's shoulder, but at the end of the day, I think uh, both the people sitting here know that, that you know, there's, there's expectations of them to produce. McKenna, how big was last season for you, the fact that you scored all these goals? And did that surprise you last year, and how much confidence did you um, give you going forward? I mean, it wasn't too surprising. I've, since my freshman year, I've kind of had some injuries, but that's always been a big goal of mine to just help my team on the attacking side. So I was happy with... I don't know, I feel like I scored a lot of the goals in the second half of the season, so I'm hoping this year I can pull some more goals in the beginning of the season. Does that momentum <laughs> carry over however many months to, to start the season, you hope? Or, I mean, how, how do you kind of view that, the way you ended last season, kind of going forward to start the season? Um, yeah, I feel like there wasn't really a finish line. It just kind of led into the next, and I think I trained a lot this summer, and I know my whole team did, so... It's just a continuum heading into this fall. Any music videos this fall? <laughs> <laughs> they did both yeah. just go to Lady Gaga this weekend, so I'm a little frightened as to what we're going to see next. Yeah. It'll be screened, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> they have a knack. <laughs> They're just going to leave you wondering. <laughs> Anyone else? Any questions? Looks like a pretty competitive league. Um, where do you see, what's your envision as far as where do you think you can place? Not seventh. 
<laughs> I think we can win it. Yeah, I mean, you know, every weekend, every game is a playoff game in the Pac-10. Um, and you certainly can't look at one loss and give up the rest of the season and think that it's going to be necessarily a 9-0 and team that wins the whole thing. Uh, the goal is to take one game at a time and keep yourself in it till the end and be playing something for the last weekend. And, uh, you know, it's been 10 years since we won the Pac-10 in 2000, and we've had other teams that have been in the hunt the last weekend, but I certainly think this team on any given day can beat any of the opponents on our schedule. Uh, and that's the goal, and, and so, you know, we're, we're aiming pretty high. To Kate and McKenna, do you mind describing your coach? No. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so many words. Smart. Smart, Do you want me to help you? Beautiful, <laughs> and talented. Talented, yeah. What else, McKenna? Come um, on. I don't know. I think she just has really good advice because she's been coaching f soccer for so long that I don't know. I just everything she says. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> it well, I just think that <laughs> Leslie's like Leslie, and even our other coaches are the perfect balance of what you would want in a coach. Um, they push you enough to a point where um, they set the bar high and you know that they have um, certain expectations for you, but at the same time they really um, do have a true um, care for us all and we know that they have our backs and we have theirs. So I just think we're so lucky with how our coaching staff I mean, all of them are awesome. I can't say enough good things about them. This might be an out there question a little bit, Leslie, but is, has there been any carryover at all from the, from the popularity of the Sounders being in town and just the popularity rise of, of soccer in general? Yeah, I think, I just think Seattle and I've always thought this, you know, I've been here going into my 17th season and Coach Worsberger can attest to this. and. Uh, you know, Seattle has always been a great soccer town. It was in the 70s, and, you know, bringing the Sounders back as an MLS team certainly hasn't hurt that. It clearly reignited the fire that we have for professional soccer. Uh, but we've had great support here at the UW for men's and our men's and women's program from the community, from soccer enthusiasts. And, uh, and for me, having come originally from California and playing against the California Pac-10 schools and other teams, I, I know we have one of the biggest fan bases up and down the West Coast, and it's 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 a fun place to coach for that reason. And I think in recruiting, and you know, you can ask our players. I, I know that they kind of feel that support when they play here, and when recruits come to watch games, they're like, "Whoa, it's important." You don't get that everywhere in our conference, even if you're maybe a higher ranked team at times. It's sort of just, "Oh yeah, you're another team." Here, there's a, there's a great soccer base here, and it's been great to have the Sounders because I think. Uh, you know, depending on what time of year it is, you can get some soccer, you know, year round pretty much. So um, it's it's been great. And it's been great for us to have professional soccer here at that level for our kids to watch and be able to go and support them and uh, support Ziggy, who's a good friend of Dean and uh, and myself. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of how our sport is, is it's, you know, very communal and um, it's been exciting. Yeah, risk, of, yeah, risk of repeating something you may have already Thanks, answered. Thanks, Aaron. And I, I did walk like, I apologize. We're younger on defense, sort of at the back of the field, than we have been. Uh, and I think it's going to be a little bit more of a work in progress, although I think between, like I said, our, we have two seniors playing back there and two really talented goalkeepers. But, you know, out of, out of six people, when two of them are freshmen and inexperienced, there's still a learning curve because that group has to be very organized. Overall, our team, I think, is very, very solid defensively. And just based on our first outing, um, our physical preparation, I'm really happy with how, uh, how physically um, – prepared we are to battle with teams and sort of that element of it. But our goal is always to be super organized defensively so that we don't have to do it very much. You know, our, our goal is to try to have the ball as much as we possibly can. And I certainly think from a technical standpoint, we're talented enough to put a lot of goals up on the board. I think we have assists and, and goals that can come from, you know, seven or eight people on this team, honestly. And um, from that standpoint, uh, you know, I think it, hopefully a balanced team is what I would say. Um, but we're probably a little bit more experienced as an attacking team than we are overall defensively. But it's the first thing I coach, and I think that's the place that we'll see the most improvement from game one to game two is how we defend as a unit. And uh, if, if that gets you know to the point where it's pretty automatic for them, it's pretty solid game in and game out, and we're doing a good job of defending the best teams in the country, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of good of attack, attacking out of that. It's wishy-washy, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anything else for the women's team? Do you 
you have any one or two difference makers on your team? Anyone who can step up and like change a game, or you, know, you say it's more balanced? Yeah, I think it's balanced. I think Kate and McKenna both can change a game. I think McKenna's one of the most unorthodox players you'll watch play. She's just very different, very creative, but in a different way than Veronica Perez was. Um, just super smooth on the ball. Uh, you know, in her own head, we don't really know what's going on, nor do we want to know, um, which I think also keeps the opponents guessing. She's very unpredictable on what, you know, she's going to do with the ball and off the ball and can finish with both feet. So I think she's she's a tough player for opponents to, to play against. Uh, I think Kate on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively, uh, gives us something that nobody else on our team team gives us. And the, the thing I've been most pleased with is we have a lot of freshmen, Lindsay Elston, um, Brianna Sweeney, Lindsay Boss, who all started the first game, who I think are just going to go like this. And we have high expectations for them for their entire careers. And I think they've already proven why we recruited them. Um, uh, Kelly Stewart's a player you know, from Kamiak High that came in rehabbed an ACL for a year, didn't play, was just coming back from that last year and just getting her feet wet, was a sophomore but seemed more like a freshman. She's really come in uh, prepared beyond my expectations. I think she's going to be someone who can do some things for us that um, she hasn't done up to this point. And uh, so Jane Mitchell's another one as a senior who started to come on at the end of last season, who's been really solid in the preseason. So, you know, I, I just think soccer is one of those games you never – you can't predict. I mean, everyone knows what the expectations on them are for their role. Forwards need to do this. Midfielders need to do this. Defenders need to do that. Where the goals come from, I don't care as long as they come. Yeah. Anything else for the women? All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.